Gloria Marisanti Guajihembo. She is a Secretary General and member of the Steering Committee Mondo Internationale APS, an international association of young students and professionals operating in cultural diplomacy. Mundo Internationale carries out research and publication projects in cooperation with international networks and universities. In her academic sphere, she has a bachelor's degree in political science and international relations, project management of a cooperation and development course, and master's degree in strategy and management, and more other studies. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's hear what she wants to share with us. Uh, 
handled by, by women. And this came naturally because uh, we have recognized uh, some of the competencies that the young women had and also uh, the will to contribute to our projects. And uh, yeah, most of them are, are, actually, are actually women. So uh, now uh, universities and embassies are also interested in, uh, in our projects. And uh, we have the opportunity to share also the different cultures that are uh, part of our organization. So we call it cultural diplomacy. Uh, because we are sharing something that not everyone knows. You know, in Italy, they don't know about Uganda, which is my country of origin. In Italy, they, they don't know about Kenya. They don't know about the role of family uh, in <laughs> different uh, countries. So we are taking this opportunity to spread the word about all the different young people that are part of our organization and their cultural background and share their cultural background. Because sharing the cultural background is the basis, the foundations of international cooperation, of building new economies, of building new projects internationally from the young age and then uh, forward. So, what do we do, actually? I think I, I need to go faster. <laughs> um, so we do three main activities. Uh, the first one is uh, research. Uh, so there are three, there are many main areas where uh, our net network is currently cooperating at an, at an international level. So um, in research, we actually do research on uh, sustainability, we write public policies, uh, we write on economics, uh, and uh, we have a particular attention to new technologies, such as satellite technologies, blockchain, um, the artificial intelligence, uh, and uh, which are all, all, of course, influencing the way that we are uh, perceiving the world, the world and uh, all our activities. We are actually right now cooperating <coughs> with the uh, Italian Ministry of, of Foreign Affairs on our research. Uh, on digital politics. And uh, the other activity is, we call it training, it's actually education. Because we, uh, uh, I mean, apart from the learning by doing, we also do activities of mentoring so that uh, the young people can have a one on one uh, relationship with professionals, uh, maybe uh, generals, uh, military, or maybe the young professional. Uh, young professionals or women that are already working in uh, banking, finance, and so on and so forth that can give them the right advice or involve them in projects so that they can uh, directly have an experience on the field of, or even have just an idea of what they are going to do when they finish studying or uh, when they, they will start working. And then the last activity, is information. Uh, actually, our blog, Monte Monte Internazionale, uh, has uh, officially become a journal, um, a registered journal in Italy. Um, so uh, all those who want to become a journalist, of course, they have to write a series of articles, for themselves, um, uh, that's, that's by law in Italy. And they have the opportunity to write for us, to share, share views, uh, to participate to also our podcast, which is uh, now uh, a new project that we are uh, launching. So today, uh, I would like to present some result, results from um, a research. Um, and uh, I am also participating in this research, which is part of uh, uh, also my studies. Um, this research, of course, is on environmental, I mean, it's not, it's not specifically on environmental peace building, but uh, there is an aspect that we have to um, keep in mind, that environmental peace building is uh, simply going <coughs> up from what we can do for, for our environment in order to prevent some natural disasters and to prevent the climate mi migration and prevent some of the difficulties that people are uh, fronting um, internationally. So, um, 
the thing is that around the world the effects of climate change and uh, the pursuit of unlimited economic growth are putting social ecological systems under increasing pressure. So the fear that this will exacerbate social political conflict has been a long-standing subject of debate among politicians and academics, studying the nexus between natural resources, environmental change, and violent conflicts. And over, over the past two decades, research on the nexus between environmental resource, resources and peace has developed the concept of environmental peace building. Environmental peace building is um, built on the assumption that natural resources that are jointly used by parties engaged in a conflict, oh, I have two minutes, rather than a feeling causing conflict, can initiate and cooperation and uh, ultimately it can contribute to peace building. So while uh, uh, the early literature in the field uh, of peace building has focused mainly on the interstate conflicts, more recent research highlights the importance of understanding bottom-up approaches and mechanisms to build peace through natural resource management and interstate conflicts. One of the bottom-up approaches has very much to do with sustainable small communities, which the United Nations consider as the starting point of a global change. So one of the uh, concepts of small community is the digital small community, which is called the smart village. Lately, we have been talking about smart cities, but smart villages are, are the starting points, the smaller communities where people can talk to each other, where they need new competencies and education in order to be of a sustainable uh, community. <coughs> so I actually brought two case studies. One case study is from Uganda, uh, in the Wakisu district, which is one of the biggest districts uh, uh, in Uganda, where um, the African development promise has been working on the involvement mainly of women in, uh, in uh, uh, building new projects, in building new skills, of course, digital skills, in, uh, in order to involve them in the community building. Second one, I would like to talk about this later, maybe with somebody, because I have no time. <laughs> no time. <laughs> Second one is the national district. The Versailles district, they are um, doing some farming projects where also they are in, uh, involving women. And the, the, of course, these are two, two of the case studies, of a multiple case study uh, that we are doing. Um, so what we have found is that in all the small communities, the starting point are women. The starting point are, are women because they need to be educated in order, in order to provide for the family, of course, to be independent and uh, uh, also to bring uh, uh, to their family and to their kids. So um, these are the, the outcomes. So um, the outcomes are, the, the, the last one is the most important, that the main international bodies, like FAO, IFAD, of course the United Nations, uh, all, they support the thesis according to which women are the key players in guaranteeing food security and consequently the sustainable development of uh, countries. Okay, I think that this will be it, but I would like to leave you my contacts so maybe we can discuss it, discuss some of these things later. These are some of the publications we make with Monde Internationale. Of course, we are open to co cooperation and uh, uh, cooperation with, uh, for the involvement of young women in our projects. This is our network, uh, some of the partners that we have, <laughs> and uh, our, our contacts. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Miriam. Maybe in the time of question and answer, you can ask something to her. I'm um, very glad that you show us your organization is amazing, what you're doing. And I think research is very important to know if it's working or what is working in some areas and know how to apply to different other places. So thank you very much, Gloria. <laughs> okay.